Okay, boys and girls, we're gonna talk some more about author's purpose. We're gonna be talking this week, we're gonna be talking next week. We still have a lot more to discuss about author's purpose, and we're gonna be talking about it in context of our story. But first, let's talk a little bit more about different parts of our story. So first, let's discuss author's purpose again. We can never review that enough. Now, an author's purpose is his or her reason for writing a text. Why did the author write that text? Now, it helps us recognize the author's message. Now, we have three reasons why an author would want to write a story or, or write, not even a story, would want to write something. They might want to persuade us of something. Remember, we have pie, P-I-E. Persuade, the author wants us to think or act in a certain way. So that could be, can you give me an example of something someone might write to persuade us? Libby? Yes, Some, they might want us to vote for it. Like the president would maybe give a campaign speech or something like that. So that is an example of somebody who is something to persuade us. Teddy? Yes, they might want to persuade you to play outside instead of staying inside and playing video games. That is also. They might try to persuade you to do that. That's very good. Olive. They might be persuading you to not litter because it's damaging the environment. Yes, they might persuade you to not to litter because it damages the environment. Thomas. Yes, like a movie review, you mean? Yeah. Yes, they try to persuade you because people write movie reviews, so they give their opinion and they might say it's a really good movie, so that would persuade you to go see the movie, or it might be a, they might write a bad review and then they're persuading you not to go see that movie. Thank you so much. You're so there you go. Now, somebody will also have a purpose to inform then the author wants to share information about a topic, so they want to tell you something about something. What are some examples of things that are made to inform you? Jensen. Like sometimes there will be commercials for persuading and informing that Xfinity might be better than AT&T. Oh, no, that's they're trying to persuade you. Yeah, that's trying to say it. Really. That's persuading you because that is not necessarily I mean, they're giving you some information, but they're still trying to persuade you. Patty? Um, people want to give you information about the past or what might happen in the future. They're trying to, per yes, they're giving you information about the past. Um, Logan? They could inform you to go to, they could inform kids to go to, that kids need to go to school. Okay. Clark? About the ocean, that's a good one. An informational book about the ocean. That's a very good example, Clark. I like that example a lot, yes. Um, there could be like um, the newspaper. The newspaper has information. It has current events in it. So it'll tell you what is happening in the world. It'll have the weather in it. That is information that people like to know. People like to know. It'll have sports scores, so it'll tell you the score of the Bears game. It'll tell you the score of the Notre Dame game. It'll tell you all those important scores that you would want to know. Yanni. Maybe if, uh, like, uh, if you um, like uh, like if you have a problem with the vaccine. About the vaccine, you're right. It'll give you important information about the vaccine. That's very important information. So you can find information about the vaccine. Excellent, yes. It can also give you information about news that's happening currently. Yes, current events, current news that's going on right now. And we live in an age where we can have up to the minute news, where we find out breaking news all the time. Like 
I get news alerts on my phone, breaking news, so I can find out things. If I was checking, I can find out things very soon, right after they happen, right boys and girls? So we can find out news and information very quickly. But we can also read books that have information about things that have happened in the past. We can read books about famous people. So that is all informational. Now, an author can also write to entertain us. And then the author wants us to enjoy a story. What are some examples of that? Do you know any examples of that? Yes, Clark? Like a book in the animals are talking. Where the animals are talking. Do you know any books like that? Um, a Pinky and Gerald book. Yes, those are good examples. Teddy? Um, books or maybe movies where um, Pete, like Scooby-Doo. Like Scooby-Doo, yes, that is there to entertain um, us. We like movies like that. Jensen? For entertaining on books, I recommend from my experience.net or books by Raina Sullivan. Yes, those are very, very popular books. Libby? Peppa Pig. What are they? Uh, Scooby shows like Peppa Pig. Yes, those are entertaining shows. Yes, Ivy. Well, there can be like books about maybe like, like fantasy stuff. Yes, fantasy books are entertaining. Anastasia? Harry Potter books. Harry Potter books, for sure. Very, very popular books. I love those books. You guys know I love those books. Um, Yanni? Um, like, um, and, uh, cartoon Yes, those are all made to entertain you. Someone had to write those. So those are all made to entertain you. Now, boys and girls, can something have more than one purpose? Can something have more than one purpose? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think, Olive? Um, yes, they can. And how can they have more than one purpose? Can you give me an example of something that has more than one purpose? The book we're reading now is to inform and entertain. Yes, the story we're reading now is informing and entertaining. Very good. And the Cram Jam videos that we watch inform and entertain. Schoolhouse Rock videos inform and entertain. So those are things that inform and entertain us. Very good. So some things inform and entertain. There are also things written that um, certain um, books can persuade and inform at the same time. So you need to be, you need to know, you need to be looking out to see, well, they're informing me, but they also want to persuade me about something as well. Okay? So now let's look at our story. Now it's important for us to notice the genre because that helps us know the author's purpose. Now here we have a narrative, nonfiction. Now a narrative is a type of story. That means it's a story. And then nonfiction. Nonfiction is, has facts in it. So it gives factual information by telling a story. So what is the author's purpose in this story again? Kelsey? to inform and entertain. Very good, they want to inform and entertain. So they're giving us two parts of this pie, right boys and girls, two parts of our pie. I like it. So let us start. Now they, they can have headings and things, but I don't think, yes, our story does have headings because we do have some headings in this story. We have what they would call subheadings that kind of look like captions in our story but I think our story is considering them to be subheadings because they're giving us more information about the Statue of Liberty. We learned some very interesting things about her. Very exciting to know these things about our country. We live in a very interesting country. Okay. So I'm gonna go to one page because that's just better. Okay, now we are also going to be looking at 
our paper. So we do have a paper we're going to be working on simultaneously as we're going to be talking about our story as well today. Okay, boys and girls? So I am going to be asking you some questions as we're reading because we want to delve into our story. Now this is the one where the teacher is going to ask a riddle at the beginning to kind of pique the student's interest about the field trip. Okay. So let us begin. A visit to the Statue of Liberty. Our class is going on a field trip. Mrs. Bolt makes us guess where. What's green and as tall as a 22-story building? She asks. A dinosaur! shouts Elijah. A green skyscraper, guesses Elizabeth. We're going to visit the Statue of Liberty, Mrs. Bolt says. What does Liberty mean? Kiara asks. Mrs. Bolt answers, Liberty means freedom. The Statue of Liberty stands in New York Harbor. Smaller copies of the statue stand in cities around the world from Paris, France, to Buenos Aires, Argentina, to Fargo, North Dakota. Oh, you know what, boys and girls? What else could we call the Statue of Liberty? She, be, she could be called what else? Yes? Yes, that's what we nicknamed her, but she could be called the Statue of... The Statue of Liberty? She is called the Statue of Liberty. This yeah, she could be called the Statue of Freedom, right? Because she is known as, because freedom means liberty. But we call her the Statue of Liberty instead. Isn't that cool? And there she is. Because liberty means what? What does liberty mean? Freedom. Freedom, it means freedom. We take a ferry to Liberty Island. We meet Ranger Alicia at the flagpole. She teaches visitors about the monument. The Statue of Liberty was a gift from France to the United States, she tells us. It was a symbol of friendship. Workers in France spent nine years building it. A gift? asks Sally. How would you wrap a present that big? Ranger Alicia says workers took the statue apart and put it in 214 boxes. A ship carried the boxes to New York in 1885. We walk to the front of the Statue of Liberty. The statue sits on a huge base. Ranger Alicia calls it a pedestal. A symbol is something that stands for something else. The Statue of Liberty stands for freedom. Ferry. A ferry is a boat that takes people or vehicles across a river or waterway. Monument. A monument is a large statue or building that honors an important person or event in history. Okay, now boys and girls. Now, our paper today, we want to pay attention really to author's purpose. And this page is really helping us focus on the author's purpose. Our author's purpose is why the author wrote this text for us. Now, I want us to look at your paper because it wants us to look at page 278. And it's asking us, it says, why is the, what is the author's purpose for writing this text? Can anybody tell me? Oops, I don't need that. I don't need that page. What is the author's purpose for writing this text? Who knows? Why do you think the author wrote this text? Why? What do you think? What do you think? Kelsey, what do you think? Yes. What, what else do you think, Teddy? Yes. About what, Olive? To inform and entertain, to inform you about the Statue of Liberty and to entertain you while doing it. Yes. Yes, let's write down to give us 
it's information about the Statue of Liberty in an entertaining way. I think you guys hit the nail on the head. You're so smart. Okay, so let's say to give information about the statue of liberty in an inter in an entertaining way. Very good. You guys are so good. Everyone has that? Almost there. Oh, I see a few pencils still writing. Okay, now, boys and girls, why do you think the author gives Ranger Alicia words to say. Why does the author have a Ranger Alicia speaking? Avery? Showing them around. Teddy, what do you think? To inform the class and the teacher about the Statue of Liberty and how it got there. Yes, very good. What do you think, Libby? Very good. What do you think, Jensen? What do you think? To persuade you to go to the Statue of Liberty. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Ivy? Um, it's, um, um, she, they're putting words in her because um, she's teaching the class about the Statue of Liberty and she's teaching them about the Statue of Liberty and showing them around. Yeah, she's telling, showing them around. Kelsey? it's more entertaining okay very good yes you guys kind of have it because they want the author wants us to know these facts right so the rangers telling us the facts that's it the author wants us to know the facts so she's having the ranger tell us the facts so very good so the author wants us to know the facts, to know, I will call them these facts. So, the ranger tells us, the ranger
or the ranger's words, I guess, gives us the information. I think it's probably the best way to say that. So the facts are being spoken by the ranger, the important information that the author wants us to know. She has the ranger telling us. How interesting is that? and girls. Now we have to think. How does knowing the author's purpose help you understand the message of this text? So the author's purpose is to, her main purpose is to do what? What is her very main purpose? What's her main purpose, Ivy? Um, her main purpose is, the main purpose is helping is yes, and we call that she wants to um, remember pie. Uh, persuade us? No, wait, inter entertain us. That's not her main purpose. Inform. What? Inform. She wants to inform us. And so, she wants to inform us. So what does she have in this selection? She provides a lot of what? Anastasia? Facts. Facts, very good. So that's what we could say. The author wants to inform us. So we'll say the author wants to inform. That means There are a lot of facts. There are a lot of facts in this selection for sure. Okay? Now, once we're all done writing, we can go on and we can finish reading our story, reading and discussing the many interesting parts of our story. So then you can just put that underneath your book or to the side and we're going to finish reading our story. The pedestal is 154 feet, 47 meters tall. The statue is 151 feet, 46 meters tall. Together, they are 305 feet, 93 meters tall. That is as long as 
three football fields. Oh my. So boys and girls, this is like another story we read, how the information is presented. They did this in the story about the U.S. Constitution, where they had captions and they had those subheadings where they presented the extra information. Do you remember that? Yeah. They had those other text and graphic features where they gave us the extra information in those. So it's always important that when you're reading, you read those parts of a story or whatever selection you're reading because there's extra information. Can you imagine how big that pedestal is? It's huge. We learned that American workers built the base. A woman named Emma Lazarus wrote a poem about the Statue of Liberty. Ranger Alicia says her poem inspired thousands of Americans to donate money to buy the pedestal. Then workers put the statue back together on the base. The Statue of Liberty opened to visitors in 1886. Inspired. If an idea or action inspired you, it made you want to do something. Notice what we have on this page. What is that? What is that called, Thomas? A heading. And look how it stands out. So we can't miss it because it's so, it's in red. It's got bold print. The print is in white. It stands out. So we could see it says inside the pedestal. We can't miss it. Inside the pedestal. Next, we go inside the pedestal. It's like a museum. Oh no, says Ella. Did the torch fall down? Ranger Alicia says this is the old torch. Workers put up a new torch. Torch. A torch is a long stick with a flame at one end that may be used for light or to start a fire. Okay, so who was surprised to learn that this that the torch that's on the Statue of Liberty right now is not the original torch. That was surprising, wasn't it, to learn that? Because sometimes when authors are writing stories, they think that you already know information that you don't know. So that was kind of a surprising thing. Let's turn the page. At night, the flame can be seen out at sea from as far as 12 miles, 19 kilometers away. The green layer is called a patina. It forms when copper mixes with water and changes into a mineral called malachite. Um, could somebody tell me what information about the Statue of Liberty's flame does the caption give? Logan? That it, can see, that it can be seen out of sea from as far as 12 miles. Yeah, that's pretty far away, boys and girls. Now, is the flame lit by fire or by something else? Kelsey? Something else. And what is it? Gold. It could be by gold. Yeah, gold. Yeah, gold. gold. Hmm. Yeah, it says it on the next page. So interesting. And how did, how did you know that? It said it where? On the, on the next page. She says the new flame is covered in real gold. Lights reflect off the shiny surface. We look at a copy of the statue's face. The nose is taller than we are. The Statue of Liberty is made of copper, like a penny, Ranger Alicia tells us. But pennies are brown, says Maria. The statue looks green. Right, says Ranger Alicia. The statue was coppery brown when it was new. 
Rain, wind, and the sun slowly changed the color to green. Okay, so boys and girls, what color was the Statue of Liberty when it was built? When it was first built? Alisa? Brown. It was brown. And what color is it today? Ethan? Green. Green. And how and why did it change? Ethan? Because it was rain, wind, the sun slowly changed the color to green. Okay, and exactly, Libby? Okay, that's right. Very good. Thank you. Both of you told me. So, that's right. When copper mixes with water, it changes to a green color. So, that's exactly what happens. That made it turn to the color that we know it today. Very nice. Next page. The big climb. Time to go up the stairs. We climb up 156 steps to the top of the pedestal. My legs are so tired, says Tony. We look up, way up inside the statue. You can see the steel frame, points out Ranger Alicia. The frame is kind of like Lady Liberty's bones. It holds her up. Let's go outside. Sculptor Frederic Auguste Bartholdi designed the statue. A man named Gustave Eiffel built the frame. He is famous for building the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Sculptor. A sculptor is an artist who uses stone, wood, or metal to make a work of art. I can see New York City, Michael shouts. Ranger Alicia points out Ellis Island. People who sailed to the United States used to stop there first when they arrived. These new Americans sailed past the statue on their way. It was one of the first things they saw, she says. She seemed to be welcoming them to their new home. The statue's full name is Liberty Enlightening the World. People also call it Lady Liberty. So what if information about Ellis Island does the text give? What do we learn about Ellis Island from reading the text? Yanni? Uh, uh, when, people, when people who sailed to the United States sailed to when they Okay, what else can we learn about Ellis Island? Teddy? Yes, Ellis Island must be close to the Statue of Liberty, yes. Um, the Statue of Liberty seemed to welcome them to their new home. It seemed to welcome them to their new home. Very good. Um, what is the full name of the Statue of Liberty? What is the full name of the Statue of Liberty? Jensen? Yes, liberty enlightening the world. Everybody, let's say that. Liberty enlightening the world. Don't you love it? Can we go up to the crown? Marcus asks. Not this time, says Mrs. Bolt. Visitors to the crown need special tickets. Andrea says, my cousin went up to the crown. She said she was as high as the clouds. Ranger Alicia says there are 377 spiral steps up and down again. We climb back down the steps. Our field trip is almost done. About 3.5 million people visit the Statue of Liberty every year. Now, boys and girls, what do the Statue of Liberty and the 4th of July celebrations have in common? 
What do they have in common? Um, Logan? They both celebrate America. They do, but they have more in common than that. Yes? They celebrate our freedom. They celebrate our freedom. What else? Yes? They both do it once a year. Well, I'll ask again on the next page, and then we'll see if you guys can remember. What do we tell Ranger Alicia? Mrs. Bolt asks. Thank you, Ranger Alicia, we shout. As we sail away, Mrs. Bolt says, the Statue of Liberty is a symbol of freedom. What does freedom mean to you? Going to the park without my brother, says Sarah. Eating whatever kind of ice cream I want, Tim says. On the way home, we stop for ice cream. We hold up our cones, just like Lady Liberty's torch. The Statue of Liberty holds a tablet that reads July IV M D C C L X X V I. This means July 4th, 1776, the date of American independence. Okay, so what do the Statue of Liberty and 4th of July celebrations have in common? Ivy? Okay, yeah. Do they both Benson? Um, we're thanking all the people that fought in the war to have our country here. And well, they don't sell, um, not exactly, yes. They both are signs of freedom. They both are signs of freedom. Logan? That's what I was going to say. They both celebrate July 4th, 1776, our nation's birthday. Oh. They both celebrate our nation's birthday. Oh. They do. They both celebrate our nation's birthday. Now, what question does Mrs. Bolt ask students at the end of their field trip? Alisa? What do you, what do you tell when you are Um, no. She does say that, but that's not the question. Teddy? Um, what does freedom mean to you? Yes, what does freedom mean to you? So, I'm gonna ask you guys that question. What does freedom mean to you? What does freedom mean to you? Thomas? Okay, I can come back to you. Ivy, what does freedom mean to you? Freedom means to me that I can do whatever I want and I can do whatever I want. Okay, Anastasia? No one can enslave you again. That's good. Um, Avery? Okay. Logan? You can do whatever you want, whenever you want. Clark? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the neighborhood is my friend. That you can what? Bike around the neighborhood with your friends. Yeah, that's nice. You can bike around the neighborhood with your friends. Jensen? Have sleepovers without your parents. Libby? Can I ever do whatever I want when I want without getting in trouble? Without getting in trouble, yes. Everyone having the same rights? Everyone having the same rights? Yes. Being able to go with my grandma's rights and backyard. Okay, good. Mikey? Being able to go anywhere. Because are we always able to do whatever we want, whenever oh, we no. want? No. Our parents have to. Well, even I can't do whatever I want. No, you can't, like, cross the line, right? I mean, yeah. you, have, you have to have some. You have, there are, uh, there are rules and laws, boys and girls, even in free countries, there are rules and laws that people have to abide by. Otherwise, it would be chaos. Um, so very good. What an interesting, interesting story. I like this story quite a bit. So now let's go to page 288. We have one more page. 
Turn pennies green. The Statue of Liberty is made of copper. When it was new, it was the color of a penny. Weather caused its green layer to form over time. You can change pennies to match the Statue of Liberty. What you need? Glass or plastic bowl. One half cup vinegar. Two teaspoons salt. Plastic or wooden spoon. Several pennies. Paper towels. One, mix the vinegar and salt in a bowl with the spoon. Two, put the pennies in the bowl. Let them sit for 10 minutes. Three, use the spoon to take out the pennies. Place them on a paper towel to dry. Four, check the pennies after an hour. The green layer that forms on the pennies is called a patina. Okay, so what kind of text feature is this page? Do you know what this page is called? No. Do you know? It's, no, but I know like the um, author's purpose. What's the author's purpose? Is it like in, um, in the screen view? No. Yes. It's to inform you, it's to teach you how to do that. And this page is, is do you know what this page is called? Yes? Turn green. It's, it's a sidebar. Cause it's just adding extra information after the story is over. So it's a sidebar. And what's different about this author's purpose for include, why do you think the author included this information? Yes, Teddy? Okay, so Oh, you think everybody's going to combine their pennies to make the no, Statue of Liberty? No, we don't have enough pennies. Okay. Well, what else do, what, excuse me, what do other people think why they have this page in our book? What do you think, Clark? To see, to experience how the Statue of Liberty turned green. Yes, to to experience how the Statue of Liberty turned green. What do you think, Jensen? It's, I think Clark is closest to the truth, to, to see how the Statue of Liberty turned green with a nice, safe, yeah. easy experiment for us. Okay? And, um, could somebody explain the patina process? How do you do the patina process? Olive, would you please explain that process for us again? What you need. A glass or plastic bowl. One, one to two cup of, cup of vinegar. Two teaspoons of salt. A plastic or wooden spoon. Several pennies and paper towels. Thank you. Then what do you do? And we are going to do this next week. So you have to bring your pennies in. So everybody has some pennies for us to try this. It'll be so much fun to see, okay? Very good. Okay, you can close your book up.